Hello and welcome to our channel Lit Savvy a guide to English literature. Today I shall be taking Thomas Gray's Elegy written in a country churchyard. The poem will be explained in a series of 3 videos as part 1, 2 and 3. Gray makes use of elegiac stanza in this poem. The four line stanzas follow iambic pentameter structure. with ab ab rhyme scheme the poem is significant for its pensive mood and serious and sublime subject the poet not just mourns the death of the common villagers but also pays tribute to those who are dead and now lie buried in their sober graves let's begin with the first stanza The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly over the lea. The ploughman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. The poet describes the evening time when the farmer returns to his home and the cattle are passing over the meadows. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the side and all the air a solemn stillness holds save where the beetle wheels his droning flight and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds as the night gradually approaches there is silence everywhere and the only sound that can be heard is that of the beetle and the tinkling of the bells of the cattle Save that from yonder ivy mantled tower the moping owl does to the moon complain of such as wandering near her secret bower molest her ancient solitary reign. In this stanza, the poet refers to the moping owl who complains to the moon about the poet wandering in its secret bower, a place that is not frequented by visitors, and thus. the bird is worried of encroachment and of losing its place of ancient abode or kingdom beneath those rugged elms that yew trees shade where heavens the turf in many a mouldering heap each in his narrow cell forever laid the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep in this stanza the poet refers to the graveyard saying that under the elm trees and yew trees lie buried the ancestors of the village here rude means illiterate the poem is significant for its pensive mood and serious and sublime subject the poet not just mourns the death of the common villagers but also pays tribute to those who are dead and now lie buried in their sober graves for them no more the blazing hearth shall burn or busy housewife ply her evening care no children learn to lisp their sires return or climb his knees the envied kiss to share the poet describes the ordinary and routine pleasures of the villagers in the daily lives by giving reference to the housewife doing her daily chores and the children climbing the father's knees to share a kiss saying that death has taken away these pleasures from them Oft did the harvest to their sickle yield their furrow oft the stubborn glebe has broke how jocund did they drive their team a field how bowed the woods beneath their sturdy stroke these were hard working forefathers who indulged into harvesting the yield ploughing the fields and cutting the woods and in doing all these works the harvest yielded to their sickle the tough earth and the strong trees 
all yielded to their sturdy strokes. Save that from yonder ivy mantle tower the moping owl does to the moon complain of such as wandering near her secret bower molest her ancient solitary reign. In this stanza, the poet refers to the moping owl who complains to the moon about the poet wandering in its secret bower, a place that is not frequented by visitors, and thus the bird is worried of encroachment and of losing its place of ancient abode or kingdom. Let's begin with the first stanza. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly over the lea. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leads the world to darkness and to me. The poet describes the evening time when the farmer returns to his home and the cattle are passing over the meadows. Nor you, ye proud, impute to these the fault, if memory o'er the tomb no trophies raise, where through the long-drawn ale and fretted vault the pealing anthem swells the note of praise. The poet further says that their graves are ordinary ones, where no trophies have been raised as tombstones, nor have songs, hymns, or anthems been sung to glorify their lives, to commemorate their existence. That's how we find that elegy written in a country churchyard is a fantastic elegy that gives us a realization of what human life is all about. We'll continue with the explanation of the remaining stanzas in part 2 video. Till then, stay home and stay safe. Thank you.